Hi friends, you'll notice I have a bit of a different start off today. We're trying the whole voiceover video. There's another YouTuber video vlogger guy that does a cooking show that starts off kind of like this. He does like his lower half. He's never has his face in it. So I figured I'd just kind of try that out so you don't have to see me. You can just get to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to do a cheesecake recipe, cheesecake factory spinoff. And it's roasted garlic farfalle. We're not going to use bow tie. We're going to use um, penne just because I didn't want to look around in the cabinet for the bow tie. But you see I've got some onions and mushrooms and sun-dried tomatoes already cut up. You can kind of measure how much you want of each. I used about a whole small onion. You need some white wine, some frozen peas, and bacon. I shredded some fresh parmesan. It calls for pancetta. But to make it cheaper and faster, I'm using thick cut bacon and there's chicken breasts roasting in the oven. So you don't need a whole lot of seasoning on the chicken, just salt and pepper it and roast it at 350 until it's done. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes or depending on how thick they are. And then you're going to be using the same pan for everything. You'll see later that I switch pans. There's the garlic. I'm using the minced garlic already because it's easier and faster than using roasted garlic. And then you saw the half and half. So you want to chop up all your vegetables and then once the bacon is done cooking you'll take it out of the pan and you know let it drip off and stuff and then you can use the pan drippings to saute your onions and the mushrooms. You don't want to put the tomatoes in there yet or they'll get dry and weird so just leave them on the cutting board. And then make sure you're not salting or oiling your pasta water and when it comes to a boil, then you salt it. You don't salt it beforehand because then it takes longer to come to a boil. And the oil in the water to make sure it doesn't stick is a myth. Don't do that. Don't put what oil in your boiling water. So then, bacon's almost done. Water's coming to a boil. See, now we've got the caramelization going on with the mushrooms and the onions. We've got our pasta in. Make sure you're saving some of your pasta water for later. Make sure you're stirring it so it doesn't stick to the bottom. And then with the garlic, you don't add it until a little bit later. Otherwise, it'll burn since the pan's still pretty hot. And then you like to stir, 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 and it's just so fun. And then you're scraping up all the delicious bacon flavor from the bottom to incorporate into the rest of your dish. And you're stirring, and you're stirring. Don't over stir it or it won't get any color on it, but I have a problem and I just like to stir. So you can see that it's kind of getting sweated out a little bit. You don't need to season anything just because the bacon grease in there is going to flavor it for you. And then you want to just make sure that you get a big enough pan to start off with so you don't have to transfer it like I did. I wasn't thinking about all the crap I have to add, so... We put the peas in, you can add them frozen, it's not a huge deal. And you just wanna stir everything all together. So the pasta was not quite done, but you wanna do that it's, so it's not quite al dente. You get it out of the pan after you reserve some of your pasta water and then stick it in this pan so that it can finish cooking with all the other things and soak up some of that flavor is why you don't cook it all the way through in the water. And then you add the cream and your wine has been added so that you're you know, you can deglaze the pan with it. You can add that while you're doing the shroomies and the onions is what I did. And then you add the cream once the pasta's in. Stir everything together. Make sure it's all incorporated. Your cream is going to help thicken up your sauce. Your pasta water can help thicken it up as well. We ended up adding about half a cup of it to the sauce. This is what it looks like. It was super really good. It was fine with the bacon. I didn't miss the pancetta and it was cheaper, more cost effective for the home cook and not the, you know, the professionals. <laughs> and then we just added some fresh parm on top, lots of fresh cracked pepper. We cut the chicken boobs up and then stuck it in and stirred it all together while it was cooking. So if you want to leave it in strippies, you can, but we cubed it. And then everything just kind of melts together and gets really delicious in the pan. And you kind of just let it sit until the sauce is the consistency that you want it. The cream is all incorporated. And since the wine was already cooked off, you don't really see if we need to worry about that. But add salt and pepper to taste. Um, you can add additional vegetation if you want. 
but this is pretty close to the knockoff recipe from Cheesecake Factory. We just found it online and printed it off, and I just adapted it to what I already had in the fridge. So as you can see, it turned out really good. So I hope you enjoy this new spin-off on my video and that you, you know, can reincorporate this recipe into your own lives. And it's really just tasty. And I hope Kevin and Rochelle enjoy this. It's a nice spring dinner and it was pretty easy to throw together. So I will see you guys next week. Bye.